Today I want to tell you guys about the three times when I almost went bankrupt. And then at the end, I also want to reveal how you can know whether you are living your purpose in life. Now my personal story is that I got trained as a scientist. I got trained as a nitty gritty guy who studied hard, got straight A's, did experiments, got his PhD, read scientific papers, published them, did presentations to thousands of people, and was sort of the star of the, of the school everywhere I went. But for those of you who feel that whatever activity you're doing is not what you truly are, I'm here to tell you that you're not alone. Because even though I got my PhD, I became a scientist, I read all those papers, I studied so much, and I learned the nitty gritty of so many different topics in medicine and neuroscience. At the end of the day, I'm not a scientist. Like, and, and how do I know that, right? What's the telltale sign that you are not what you're trained to be? It's quite simply this. When I talk to people who are born to be scientists, who are born to look at the nitty gritty, they are very different from who I am. They're different from me. And I noticed that when I was finishing my PhD. Now I'm about to get to the three, three ways I almost went bankrupt very soon, but, but let me set up the context. When I was doing my PhD and the people that I saw around me, they were truly, truly interested in the how, right? Asking the question, how? So for example, you, you take a, a topic like testosterone, which I've studied for the last 10 years, hardcore, right? It's like, how is testosterone produced in the body? How does it get converted to dihydrotestosterone? How is it synthesized from cholesterol? How does the brain's mechanism, starting from the hypothalamus, actually trigger the release of testosterone? How? Right? I know people who are deeply, deeply into this how. I'm not. And, and I'm going to be very honest with you. Like, I don't really care. As long as I get the results, which I did, I doubled my testosterone through many, many natural methods. Because I got the result, I didn't really care about the how. And even when I was studying, I was following different exercises and supplements and diets. I didn't really care about the how. I only cared to the extent of getting the result, right? So, but, but, but that's not what a scientist is. A scientist, from my, in my opinion, is someone who studies something for the love of it. I haven't really found a topic which I truly care about. Neuroscience is the closest it got, right? Studying the brain, learning about the brain, how people work, how you know pe people socialize and emotions and memory and learning. I, I like that stuff. But when I look at a guy like Andrew Huberman or Derek from More Plates, More Dates, I, I look at these guys and I'm like, they are true scientists. Right, or if I look at Paul Saladino or Peter Atia, you know, these guys who are deeply into the science or even Rhonda, Dr. Rhonda Patrick, I don't care that much, right? I was discussing this with Martha last night. I care more about dancing. Like, you know, every night we dance for about 20 minutes. And if, if Martha's tired, then I just dance on my own. She watches me like last night and like, I truly feel my soul and who I am when I dance. And this is very interesting because even when I was doing my PhD, I remember my professors would come up to me he's like, Farhan, the way you tell the story, the, well, the, the way you are describing the experiments, the way you are selling 
your project, your PhD. It's like, even if it's bullshit, like even if it's like, even if you're really elaborating and, and, and making things like hyperbolic, I believe you because of the way you're, because of how much confidence you have in what you're talking about. And I get that. Like, I feel that the path that I've been on as a scientist and a doctor is not really my path. It got me to boosting my testosterone, thank God, but it also got me to having low testosterone, right? It was the culprit because of all the studying and the bad posture and the bad diet and the bad sleep. But now I realize, and, and for those of you who, are, who believe that you're not in the right profession, like I understand, man, like I feel you. And if you are unhappy with your life, this is the first question you have to ask yourself. Are you in the right profession? Are you doing what you love? Now, I personally, I love to dance. I love to socialize. I like to talk to people. I like to learn about people's problems, solve, help solve their problem if I can. If not, just listen is enough, right? Usually listening is enough and really paying attention and caring about someone. I had my wedding last week and, and the amount of dancing and partying and socializing with family like it really brought me to life and my extrovertedness is not really fit for science it's not really fit for medicine it's not really fit for sitting at home and reading scientific papers right i look at code jamo right the passion he has for when, when he talks about herbs and he goes into the nitty-gritty of what type of water to drink and what type of bed sheets to sleep on and and uh, what what exact herbs to take for different results for you know for memory and focus and testosterone and exactly how these herbs are manufactured and exactly you know, he goes you know the water filtration system of what type of water you should drink and what type of water you should shower from all of these nitty gritties that I see in Code Jamo I don't have that like I don't really give a shit even though I have expertise and knowledge in some of these things i don't like care that much you know i just don't give a fuck and that's really interesting because it, it gets me unhappy sometimes like when 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 i when, when i'm talking to someone let's say about the ice bath and they go into the nitty-gritty like oh should you ice bath before the workout or after the workout or how many minutes should you do and what type of breathing you should do i'm like just fucking do it man just do it, have fun, be grateful that you have an ice bath for God's sake, right? It, it's the gratitude. So this is what I've started doing now. What I do now is I become grateful for things and that takes me into the present moment and it makes me forget the, the mental masturbation. So I'll give you an example. In December, we're going to Europe and I had this massive anxiety about, you know, should I pack the shower filter, which is heavy as shit? Right, uh, we got it from this really good company, Live Pristine. It's like two hundred dollar shower filter with one hundred thirty dollar, you know, the, the the two cartridges. It's like I have, I have it. I already bought it. It's it's like I can take it. But do I want that extra attachment? Right, it gives me anxiety. Like I'm gonna be in different Airbnbs in all these different cities. Yeah, they might ha not have the best water, but all of these people in Europe they're showering with this water. I'm probably gonna be okay. And the gratitude that I feel is, well, at least I have water to shower with, or at least I have water to drink, right? So the gratitude really brings me into the present moment, into this bliss and, and, and here in my heart. And then something like, uh, should I take my air filter to Europe, right? With the bad air and I'm like, it's gonna be all right. Like, at least I am alive. At least I have food. At least I can like go to a gym and work out. At least I have the ability to be in nature, have a loving family, have the senses to feel, right? So I'm like, no, I gotta let go of the shower filter. I gotta like let go of the, of the air filter and I did, I let it go. I, I completely stopped thinking about it and, I, and I'm just sharing that with, this with you guys so you also stop mental masturbation if that serves your purpose. For me right now, my number one goal in life is to scale my company, AfroD. That's all I care about. I wanna take AfroD to a million people in the world. 
but I'm not gonna be able to do that if I'm thinking all the time about like, oh, uh, is this thing organic, <laughs> right? Is, you know, should I do an elimination diet? Is this exact type of workout the best for my testosterone? Like all of these things have now become a distraction for my growth in terms of my scaling the company to the moon. And this is what I feel inside. So I'm just sharing the honest truth with you guys here. Okay. And uh, same thing with bed sheets, right? J Coach JMO told me, hey man, you need organic cotton or you need at least 100% cotton or, or, you know, I had these eucalyptus sheets that my friend James sent me with, you know, he has this company, Ethical Bedding. He sent me these sheets, you know, they're worth like $500, right? And uh, he sent it to me and I used it for two years. And now it's like, I don't want to travel with it because I want to be very light. I, I want to like let go, right? So I'm going to be in these Airbnbs with polyester sheets probably. And I'm like, it's all good. I used polyester sheets my whole life. I was good. My dad's used polyester sheets his whole life. He's good, right? So I just feel like uh, the nitty gritty that we have can be avoided if we are happy here, right? This is the mind shift that, that I'm having in life right now. I'm focusing on being happy here and feeling gratitude and bliss here. So I don't care about the nitty gritty because I don't wanna waste a single synapse worrying about things. I don't wanna live in fear anymore. And I've been living in fear, right? Oh, I wanna have eucalyptus bed sheets or 100% cotton bed sheets or wearing everything 100% cotton. Or, 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 you know, having the perfect shower filter, not having the hard water of Tulum. There's millions of people here that are showering with hard water in Cancun, in Playa, in Tulum. So they're good, they're fine, they're living, right? And so it's like this gratitude, like I'm not in the gulag. I'm not in, 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 in Ukraine right now or, or in Palestine or Israel. Like I'm not, I'm not in these war regions. Right? I'm not in Russia. I'm not in North Korea. I'm, I'm not in these countries. I'm here in Tulum and I, I'm living a beautiful life. So why stress? Why not just be calm all the time and be in bliss all the time? So this is the new realization I've had. Now, if someone in my family feels otherwise, like if Martha, for example, wants the shower filter or she wants the water, uh, air filter, that's fine with me, man. For, for sure, I'll do it for her. Or like today, my brother called me and he's like, but yeah, I need the best whey protein. And I'm like, shouldn't even have whey protein first of all, just eat meat. You don't need that much protein. Just eat as much protein as you can and be happy. But he's like, no, but yeah, I want the best protein. So I asked JMO and he gave me the link for the best protein and I sent it to my brother. Now he has the best protein. So it's like that, man. It's like, uh, I just want to be in gratitude from now on. I just want to stop mental masturbating and like thinking and be, you know, mental masturbation and analysis paralysis. Fuck all that, man. Just fuck all that. Now let's get to the bankruptcy. And this, this is the context because I've been in this mental masturbation, not just with, with like health stuff, but with girls, with acting and with fashion. These three things almost made me bankrupt in life. Let's start with girls. When I started my health journey 10 years ago, I had one goal. I wanna become fit. I wanna become rich so I can get hot girls, bang hot girls. That was it. And that was a huge distraction because I wasn't doing my work with this motivation, like with a pure motivation of love. It was like out of fear. And it works, right? Kobe Bryant played basketball out of fear. Michael Jordan played basketball out of fear. Like all of these, you know, they're trying to validate something. But I don't want to live my life like that. So all those years of like, oh, let me go to the city so I can pick up girls better, right? L let me become fit so I can get a... I, I understand the survival mechanism of that. I get it. But I want to stop doing that now. And I want to warn you to probably don't do that if you can avoid it, right? Don't be obsessed with, oh... I want to do this career so I can get this goal. Do your career because you love it, because it's awesome. Right? So I almost went bankrupt, right? I was literally obsessed about, you know, I, I was 
I was doc testosterone. I was writing eBooks. I was making video courses all about, uh, you know, how to boost testosterone. And it was, it was initially to the RSD guys who wanted to boost testosterone to get girls. That was like my pitch, like get girls and be attractive and look better to get girls and to, 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 to pull girls from clubs. That was why I wanted to boost testosterone and become fitter and richer. The second way I almost went back bankrupt is when I was in New York, in Manhattan, I started doing fashion. And I literally for six months, I was in a fashion studio and all I did was sew clothes, design clothes, read about fashion, right? Learn how to do like uh, pattern design, pattern matching uh, from, from the seamstress and, and learn the business of fashion. That's all I was doing for six months. Every single day I was shadowing the fashion house in Manhattan. And that almost went, made me bankrupt. Every single time I've become obsessed with something and went away from the business, the business went to shit and I had to come back. And I felt really, really bad. So if you're an entrepreneur, go all in. There's no other way to become successful. You have to go all in. And every time I went all in, the business was successful. And thank God I have such a beautiful co-founder, Imran, who picked up the slack and, and and forgave my sins of whenever I would like leave. And I'd be like, hey, you guys handle the business. I'm gonna leave for six months. And I did that. And the third time, which was the most recent when the, I almost went bankrupt is when I went into acting, right? When I went to Kiev, I was doing acting school. When I was in Toronto, I was doing improv school. When I, during COVID, I was doing uh, full-time acting and school and plays and, 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 and auditions all the time, like all day. And thank God I had a really great media buyer in, in a really great marketer in Afro D who said, you know what, Farhan, do it. I'm gonna handle the marketing side of Afro D. But that also almost went to shit. And then I had to step back and take over. And so it's just three, these three moments of almost bankruptcy are, are like, they don't feel good, man. Like it literally feels like I'm being this disloyal and I'm a traitor to my own company. So I want you guys to understand that if you really want to do something great, you have to go all in and you have to go all in for years, like 10 years of all in, you know, the 10,000 hours of all in, doing it correctly all the time, all the time, every day. And I wanna make a pact and a promise to you today that from now on, I will be all in on Afro D. I'm making a promise to you right here in this video. I don't wanna spend a single synapse, a single brain connection, a single fucking receptor to get a uh, binded to, you know, from a neurotransmitter. I don't wanna get a single moment of waste time thinking of anything but scaling my company. So I want you to make a pact with me on this, all right? Let's make a promise together. Whatever our passion is, whatever our purpose is, let's fucking do it, man. Let's fucking do it, all right? This is Doc Farhan giving you a badass flex from Tulum Gym. Go make it happen, buddy, and I'll see you tomorrow.